This time on Woody's Garage we work on the Nova Roma or is it Roma Nova? Jeepers. I'm back to the Nova Roma and the hideous wheel setup. But I think we got the Rupp conquered. So now we got to conquer this one. And there's some things I thought of. The chain is too short. So I got to take the chain apart. And I'm going to um, take one end of it and put like a zip tie or something on it so that it won't move. So I can see down the chain. Okay, we took a piece of wire and just wired the chain so it'll stay there tight. So that the lie of the chain will be easy, easily viewed. Well, I think I got it. Uh, we got a spacer here and a spacer there. The best alignment tool I could get was this pipe to sit flush against the side of the engine. The engine was all the way back. And I kind of followed the pipe, you know, all the way to the sprocket and then looked to see where the chain was on top of that. And it looks pretty straight, so groovy. The next thing we got to do is now we'll take it off, put on the bolts, we'll tighten this up a bit, and we'll see how long the bolts are from the sprocket to the rim itself. This should be fun. Okay, we got a nut on one side and this clamp on the other side. These are uh, locking nuts, so they're a bit of a pain in the butt to put all the way on. So I got the one on the other side going all the way to the locking part. It also, you kind of wear out the nylon after doing it a million times. So this is snug enough right now that um, we'll put some, um, I'm thinking three bolts through the holes. One, two, three and that'll get it kind of even across then we can put one down and use it as a measurement so let me put those in these guys are almost clean okay we look about even these are just snugged up probably will have uh lock washers on them so now i can take one and just put it in like that once it's on the cup, I'll have to say that is, you know, the measurement of how long they got to be. So that's a good amount of threads, too, to, to go into the, the uh, uh, rim. So that should be uh, work out fine. I just got to figure out what that is, and then I got to start cutting up six spacers. Let's do some looking out. And right where that is where it gets a little wider, if you can see that, is exactly how long I need it to be. Which is great. These are like uh, head bolts out of a Briggs & Stratton or something. They look so familiar. Um, I got out of my stash here that I got from the older guy. So that's how long we'll make them. Or we'll make one anyway that long and uh, go from there. It's the first one cut with the pipe cutter. It's kind of thick stuff. Took a while. How am I going to figure out if this one's right? I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to take those three bolts out. Put this on one of them. And see how it feels. Looks like it's a little bit long compared to the spacer on the axle. hope I'm thinking about this right. I mean, it's only one bolt in, but... Um, Let's put the other two in and see if we can get it flatter. I sucked it down on that side. <laughs> That's not right. Back off on them a little bit. It's kind of hard to get it level when it's, you know, when it's incorrect. You know, to me, I just got to go by this one, how flat it is there, and that we got, you know, a bushing it doesn't really look like it's square does it but let's take a little bit off of this and uh, we'll get it down so that it looks like it's fitting the, uh, just like the spacer does just as comfortable yeah just right I also um, squared off that bearing a little better too the uh, I'm sorry the inside spacer so now I gotta make five more of these and we should be good to go. Let's 
So right about now I'm thinking like, how am I going to get all six <laughs> of these spacers and bolts to go in at the same time? Well, I guess we're going to find out, huh? That's six, straight from the factory. On the last one I noticed that like the first one I made was not exactly straight. So <laughs> and I use this to measure every single one of these. So I think we're going to have to do a little filing to get them all exactly the same. Uh, we'll look for the shortest one first and make them all like that. So I don't know, it was pretty hard to like, you know, scratch a line and then use the uh, the cutter to line that up. Although I hit that pretty well. They're still, I'm sure, going to be off a little bit. Shit, they're not bad at all. Some have a little bit of a lip from the uh, the cutting. The one on the uh, end here looks like it's probably the tallest one. Not bad. So that's the threads that'll be going into the rim. Okay, it wasn't really hard to start them. I just put it on the side here and had the spacers on the bolts and lined them up and we got them all started. Let's snug them up. Kind of snugged up and I gave it a spin and the sprocket is a little wobbly. So I think we're going to have to work on that a little bit. It also looks like there's still a tiny bit of space with that spacer in the bearing. Although maybe it's sitting on the inside there. Can't really tell. But it needs a little more refinement. Um, I'm going to put it on the bike right now just to kind of see what things look like. Yeah, that's good. As I get these damn spacers uh, all the same, that's going to take a little work. Kids, don't try this at home. Just go buy a new fucking wheel. Or actually go buy a whole damn new mini bike. <laughs> but uh, we'll get there. It's just a little more refinement. I should also say, you know, it was a pretty daunting task putting this thing together. Lots of, um, you know, lots of measurements, lots of cutting. Lots of spacers. I mean, you've got a total of uh, one, two, three, four. Two, we got a total of ten spacers in this in this wheel. So, just to get this. Now, I also looked at this thing over here. I mean, it must have had a disc brake, which is kind of a cool thought. Don't know if you know. Look at the space there. If something could actually work on that. Don't know. There we go, focus. Okay, been lots of filing. Use the calipers. They should all be the same now. <laughs> so let's put it back together and see if we're a little more even in our sprocket. Yeah, it spins nice now. Pretty uh, even. And look at that middle spacer for the axle is uh, bottomed out too. So measurements are good. This should work well. Okay, we got it mounted up. Uh, I've got a couple of issues. One is that the sprocket is not quite as straight as I'd like. Another is this axle is threaded on both ends with lock nuts. And like, you know, one decided to take and the other one kind of just sat there. Ha! <laughs> How do you solve that? I think maybe by taking the axle out, vice gripping the inside or something and put one nut on equidistant which would be about halfway from that uh, so that they come out even but I just snugged it up because I want to see what was going on and the wheel looks right the chain looks right but I don't know if you'll be able to see this It's a wobble. It's not a big wobble, but it, you know, I don't want it. I thought I did everything right. Um, you know, I kind of don't want to start cranking down on the nuts trying to true it that way. Because they all, you know, 
I don't know. I'm also going to need another length of chain, which I may or may not have. I don't think I have the master link, so. Always something. <laughs> anyway, we're a big step closer, I'd say. Just, um, how would you go about getting that straight? When you think all your spaces are, you know, pretty well set up. Uh, maybe I'll try tightening them a little bit and see what happens. Kind of like truing. Oh, there's a little wiggle. I hate to say it almost looks like it's in the sprocket, but... I took the wheel off the uh, Romanova again uh, for a couple of reasons. I want to center these nuts since that one wasn't threading on when I um, was tightening it. I want to try to get an even amount on both sides. And I want to get that sprocket straight. I don't know what it is. I thought maybe it was the rim. You know, I'm slightly thinking, is it the sprocket? Um, or is it my spacers? Yeah, that's it. It's got to be. I'm going to look at the spacers again. Yeah, just stuck it in the soft jaws. And I think once you get the nylon lock thing at the end, kind of broken in, it's going to be a little bit easier. At least I think. Oh, I forgot to put the washer on. Oh, I forgot to put the wheel in between. <laughs> okay. So I'm reaming out these spacers just because there's like little residual pieces of metal in there. I'm wondering if when the bolt goes through it just takes a little shard and puts it over the lip and it's screwing us up because the sprocket seems straight. Okay, we're still kind of wonky. I'm starting to suspect the spacer. I'm going to take it down some. I'm not sure it's totally square, and I don't know how to totally get it square either, so. I see the problem big time. <laughs> yeah, the spacer for the axle is way too long. How could that be? Did I grab the wrong spacer, or am I spaced out? I think I'm spaced out. Yeah, that's much better. Put it together and see. Well, it isn't right, and you can see that the, uh, the the spacer I don't have square, and suddenly this spacer appeared, and I'm wondering if this was the one. It's got a little wave, but it's not bad. It's uh, snug. It's not tight. Let's tighten it up, I guess. Probably say the heck with it. I think it's good enough. Yeah, it looks good, but guess what? Now I can't find that outside spacer. <laughs> hey, when you work in this kind of environment, I mean, working on three bikes, a snow blower, and something else, and I never put anything away, and like, yeah, it kicks you in the ass, it does. So clean your shop. Okay, we're making a band brake holder for the Romanova and I got this old piece of crappy metal. I think this was once inside my wood stove. It's a temporary thing. So is it tempered? Is it brittle? Is it, I don't know, uh, annealed? I'm not sure, but I think it'll hold for the band break here. And this is what we got planned. You got those two um, bolt holes there and that's what's going to hold it. And they almost line up to these. I got to make a groove in the bottom down here for the clutch because it uh, sticks up a little bit. So, without further ado, got to find a couple of bolts and uh, maybe clean this up a little bit. Actually, I don't think we're going to need to notch it for the uh, output shaft at all. We got that notch in the front. That'll go on there, the front there, and then this one will go through here. 
and then we'll put the bolt to mount the the band brake right here it'll come out like this I found a couple of bolts I had to cut them off they were a bit too long for the hole but uh, that's nice and tight now we got to see if we can find one to stick out of here that kind of actually feels like it's going to be close I might have to drill a hole up here I don't know if I mentioned it, but I turned the plate around so you got the slot out here and that part in the back, which makes it kind of nice, and drilled this new hole up here. And now we'll put the, while it's still all nice and slack, we'll see if we can get a, uh, the bolt through and the nuts on. What we got is uh, this bolt, we got two nuts, and we got a lock washer too. I'll show you how that's going to go. So what we've got so far... There's a lot of hardware up doing this. <laughs> I always hated that. I go like, oh, I don't want to use those nuts for this job. <laughs> I need to look for something crappier. But uh, uh, we're sticking out kind of far right now, so we got to bring this whole unit in. I had to add this little spacer here and another nut to take up the space where it wasn't threaded. But that may end up going away because we got to go this way. So the thing lines up. So let's crank it in a little bit. Hopefully this has room to for the bolt to stick through. Let's find out. Well, that's what we got right now. Looks good. You know, we got a little play here. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not that experienced with band brakes. I've put a few on recently. That doesn't mean I'm an expert. If this should be tight or if it should have a little play in it. Which it does. It has a little side to side too, which isn't bad. Uh, but it seems to line up like, you know, kind of once it's under tension, it's going to stay tracking. Hopefully, really nice. And this is tight. This, uh, the end of this bolt kind of rests on the aluminum a little bit, but, you know, big freaking deal. I'm not going to cut that off. That's just fine. And everything's really tight. I got a crappy cable I can use. I got to cut it down to size a little bit. And, uh, then we can see if it works. Let the cable run. It's going to come down the tube. I think I'm going to bring it all the way down here. They're going to make a little loop up. I don't know. Then I'll come through here. We just got to take up the slack here. And uh, we have it adjusted on the, uh, the grip here so that it's all the way in. Um, okay, let's uh, clamp this down. After we put a little pressure on it, like this, oh, is this going to work? Oh yeah, it'll work. Yeah, a couple of zip ties, we'll cut off the excess. Turns nice. Uh, you can. It's nice that you can put the cable in below down here. This one has stops that are down below instead of up on top. It smacks a bar like it does in the Little Indian in the Rutman. And smash up the paint job which is kind of nice so I like it kind of slick that's definitely gonna stop could actually uh, crank it out a bit too because we got plenty of adjustment moved it out a little bit kind of bent it too with my hands so that it would work on the clutch uh, track on the clutch correctly and I'm starting to doubt my uh, having a little bit of slack up here I'm actually thinking this should probably be tight and now that I moved it out that spacer kind of doesn't work right there so you know we can washer it up definitely but I'm wondering should this be loose or tight there you know, if you got it tight, you can kind of hold it out like that. If it's loose, it's kind of like this, but it's, you know, it's a light, light rub. Actually, I gave that some thought when I did the other one. I think I made the other one so it's tight and it's out like this. You know, you clamp it down like that so you get the space. Okay, that's a little better. We made a new spacer. The right size so it'll line up so this can get tight I, mean, I don't think it's supposed to be loose otherwise it'd just be like wearing constantly 
So that's firm and the uh, lock washer is outside here and it's nice and tight and it works great. Like it. Crummy seat is off. What do you think about that one? I kind of like that one because it's kind of unique. But I think my fave is that one. It's the motorcycle sissy bar. Actually, both of these are motorcycle sissy bar pads. I like it. It's so ratty. That's why I like it. Well, I hadn't noticed this before. This looks like this is a second uh, brace it was put on. Neither of these look like they were original. Look at how much that overhangs. How sharp it is. You know, I had to get out the welder and test my welding skills and put these on. I also have a rear fender bracket that's long gone. If I can find a piece of metal to match that, then I'll probably replace that too. So, these things I guess are never finished. For all I know, I'll, you know, take it apart and paint it purple and hate it.